going over IRS Form 966, Corporate Dissolution or Liquidation as Required under Section 6043A of the Internal Revenue Code. Who must file this tax form? A corporation or a farmer's cooperative must file Form 966 if it adopts a resolution or plan to dissolve the corporation or liquidate any of its stock. Exempt organizations and qualified subchapter S subsidiaries should not file Form 966. Exempt organizations should see the instructions for Form 990, Return of Organization Exempt from Income Tax, or Form 990 PF, Return of Private Foundation or Section 4947A1 Trust treated as private foundation. Subchapter S subsidiaries should see Form 8869 Qualified Subchapter S Subsidiary Election. Do not file Form 966 for a deemed liquidation such as a Section 338 election or an election to be treated as a disregarded entity under Treasury Regulations Section 301.7701-3. You should file Form 966 within 30 days after the resolution or plan is adopted to dissolve the corporation or liquidate its stock. If the resolution or plan is amended or supplemented after Form 966 is filed, you should file another Form 966 within 30 days after the amendment or supplement is adopted. You should file Form 966 with Internal Revenue Service Center at the address where the corporation or cooperative files its income tax return. Distribution of property. A corporation must recognize gain or loss on the distribution of its assets and the complete liquidation of its stock. For purposes of determining gain or loss, the distributed assets are valued at fair market value. There are exceptions to this rule that apply to a liquidation of a subsidiary and to a distribution that is made according to a plan of reorganization. This document is a one-page tax form and contains instructions both on the first page as well as the second page. To complete this form, start at the top with the name of the corporation and the corporation's employer identification number, followed by street address or number or PO box, street and room if applicable, city, state, and zip code. On the right hand side, you'll check the type of return uh, that this uh, corporation normally files. In block one, you'll enter the date of incorporation. In block two, enter the place of incorporation. In block three, you'll check whether this is a complete or a partial liquidation. Block four, you'll enter the date of the resolution or plan of complete or partial liquidation that was adopted. You'll enter five, the Internal Revenue Service Center where the corporation filed its immediately preceding tax return. If the immediately preceding tax return was filed electronically, simply enter E-File on line five. Line six, you'll enter the last month, day, and year of the previous tax year. On 7A, you'll enter the last month, day, and year of the final tax year. And line 7B, was the corporation's final tax return filed as part of a consolidated income tax return? Select yes or no. If you select yes, you must complete lines 7C, 7D, and 7E. If you select no, simply proceed to line 8. In line 7C, you'll enter the name of the common parent, if applicable. 7D, the employer identification number of the common parent. And in 7E, the service center where the consolidated return was filed. 
If it was filed electronically, you'll also enter e-file in this block. In line eight, you'll enter the number of shares that were outstanding at the time of adoption of the plan of liquidation, either common or preferred stock. In line nine, you'll enter the dates of any amendments to a plan of dissolution. Line 10, enter the code section under which the corporation is to be dissolved or liquidated. For example, you can enter section 331 for a complete or partial liquidation of a corporation or section 332 for a complete liquidation of a subsidiary corporation that meets requirements outlined in section 332B. In line 11, you'll enter whether enter the date of a previous form 966 filing if this form is an amendment or a supplement to an existing resolution or previously filed plan. You'll attach a certified copy of the resolution or the plan and all other amendments and supplements not previously filed. Note the signature line contains the signature of an officer authorized by the corporation. This is a requirement. The return must be signed by either the president, vice president, treasurer, assistant treasurer, chief accounting officer, or another corporate officer that is authorized to sign. If the return is filed on behalf of a corporation by a receiver, a trustee, or a signee, the fiduciary must sign the return instead of the corporate officer. The signature is followed by the title and followed by the date. That wraps up our review of IRS Form 966, this simple one-page document. If you'd like more instruction on how to complete this form, simply go to our website, teachmepersonalfinance.com, enter IRS Form 966 in the search bar, and this article should appear. If you like these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter on our website. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments box. Thank you.